The conclusion of February and the beginning of March is a very busy time for Seton Hall sports. The men's and the women's basketball team are holding on to their chances of being selected in the NCAA tournament. Both teams play tomorrow night and the men will take on a ranked Xavier team which surely will make or break their tournament push. The women hold the net 60 ranking and are facing Butler on Friday. The softball and baseball teams are back in action and have already gotten off to strong starts. The baseball team took a one game of a three-game series against a 12th ranked University of North Carolina team. The softball team dropped the first two games of the season but won three of the next five to salvage the road trip. Will either the basketball team play well enough during the regular season or Big East tournament to try to make a push to the big dance? Was this win against UNC a sign of things to come for the baseball team? And will the softball team turn things around and have a winning record for the first time in over 10 years? We'll touch on all this on more. My name is Louis Pasquale and this is Hall Talk. Welcome into Hall Talk. As mentioned before, my name is Louis Pasquale. I'm joined alongside Liam Harding. We have a lot of Seton Hall sports to talk about uh, as we are now back into Hall Talk. Liam, first before I get into it, how are you doing today? I'm just ecstatic to be back here in the studio doing another episode of Hall Talk, especially with you, Louis. Well, thank you. It means a lot. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about, as I said, but first, let's talk about the men's basketball team. They have a game tomorrow against 16th ranked Xavier. Uh, and they then play Villanova and Providence to finish out the season. They're currently ranked 70 in the net. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the game tomorrow, just in general? I mean, it's, it's a very big one. Um, obviously, Xavier's a really is a ranked team. Last time we played them, only lost by a small margin. Uh, and it's just a big test for the, the team to make it into the big dance. Yeah, I agree. And I think that Kadar and Richmond will play a big part. Not sure if he's healthy. Word hasn't really come out yet. But I really think that Kadar and Richmond playing... Uh, whether he does or not will we'll obviously have an outcome. Uh, I'm not going to go as far and say Seton Hall is going to win because it, you know, it's a little bit of a stretch, but um, I do feel as though Kadar Richmond certainly will have an impact when, he, when or if he does indeed play. So uh, looking past tomorrow, looking ahead towards you know, the Big East tournament and the March Madness tournament, I think it starts with tomorrow if Seton Hall even has a fleeting chance of making it anywhere in the Big East tournament, uh, making a run of the Big East tournament, and then eventually getting into the March Madness tournament. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100%. Uh, tomorrow is a very big t uh, big game for the Pirates, um, especially because the, it's a home game, it's lower bowl sellout. They're expecting 2,000 fans uh, for the game tomorrow. And just overall, it's a big one. It's going to set the tone for the rest of the season, especially with Zach Fremantle, um, for Xavier being out. He was a big threat this whole season and the last time they, the Pirates played. So him being out, Kadari, if he comes back, Dre Davis, if he comes back, this is just going to set the tone to get the team back on track. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that Seton Hall, I think if they want to make the tournament without having too, too big of a push in the Big East tournament, they have to win this game. And even so, they're going to need to make it to the semifinals of the Big East tournament. Now, if Seton Hall loses this game tomorrow, then it'll be much, much harder to make the, the, the NCAA tournament unless they win the Big East, right? They already have a ranking of 70. Xavier is, is, would be a huge win for Seton Hall, uh, but losing to Xavier, uh, the rest, the, the Villanova and Providence won't really matter in the sense that I think it, they would be too, ranked too low in order to get into the NCAA tournament. So if that's the case, if they do not win tomorrow on Friday, uh, against Xavier, then I think that they would have to win the Big East tournament, get a bid that way, because that makes more sense for uh, their, their ranking and then ha also how they would get into the tournament. So now that we've talked about men's basketball, let's head over to the other side and talk about some women's basketball. The women's basketball is sitting at a little bit better of a position as they have, there are 60 in the, in the net ranking across the nation. Uh, they have two games left against Butler, which is a very winnable game. Then they have a very tough game against a good Villanova team. So how do you think the season will finish out for the women? Um, uh, I think the, the, the season that's very high, there's a good chance that the women do make the big dance for in March, especially after you know, they suffered a loss against DePaul after winning them earlier uh, last week. And they got a big win against uh, Xavier 
uh, on senior night. So the, you really see them coming together as a team. Uh, some of the players actually are getting it together. Obviously, Lauren Park Lane, she had a 20 and 10 game, which is very typical of her. But a big shock of the past couple of games has been Azana Baines. Um, she was able, when she played the, at the Paul on Wednesday, she had 29 points. Uh, coming off the bench for Xavier, though, she had 19, second leading scorer of the game. So I think with her coming, uh, getting that together where she's coming off the bench or if she's starting, that's going to be a big thing for the Pirates uh, going into the last couple games. Yeah, I agree. And I was at DePaul for that game uh, against, obviously, DePaul in Chicago, where Azana Baines took over, had a career day, scoring a career high. She looked like a different player. I mean, she came off the bench. She was hungry. She was fighting for boards down low. She was getting it done on the offensive side as well, with, with whether it was driving to the, the basket or it was dishing the ball out. So she really was doing a fantastic job. And I think I, this team very well could get hot come tournament time, whether that's Big East or NCAA. And like you said, I think they have a decent chance. So first we'll start with the Big East. Uh, Seen Hall was projected to be fourth uh, in the preseason polls. Um, and so they're trying to live up to that standard. Uh, and I, I feel as though they very well could, uh, depending on how, how they do in the Big East tournament. So what are your thoughts with how far Seton Hall, Hall could go in the Big East tournament? I think they can go pretty uh, very far, actually. I mean, right now they're sitting at number six uh, in the mm -hmm. conference. Um, and but they've been playing very well. They obviously they've swept all the uh, bottom feeders of the the league. You know they've beaten St. John's twice now. They swept Xavier. Uh, they just need to sweep Butler and handle business. And they've also split series uh, with some of the bigger teams. Obviously they they got swept by a uh, uh, UConn, which that's one of the top teams in the country. But if they're able to win against Butler and then split with uh, Nova, I think that just sets the precedent that they can make a really big run in the Big East this year. Yeah, I totally agree with that point. I think that especially a team like the Seton Hall women's team, we've seen them do a little bit of everything. Uh, again, the two games against DePaul, the defense was non-existent for, for the most part. But aside from that, they, they've shown that they can get it done on the defensive side. Obviously, they have really potent scorers in Lauren Park Lane, Sydney Cooks, Azana Baines off the bench. Alexia Lesh has done her part throughout the year. Uh, Maya Bembry has been a fairly good job. Her jumper is basically automatic from the mid-range. So, I mean, the Seton Hall certainly has players offensively uh, that can get things done. Which, which makes me think that they can go far in the Big East tournament. Now moving on to the NCAA tournament, the Big Dance, which is what they missed out on last year. We, we know that they had the crazy run in the NIT tournament, finishing second, finishing runner-up. So do you think they can get the revenge from last year and make it to the Big East tournament? And if so, how far do you think they'll go? I mean, I think they stand a very good chance of making it to the NCAA tournament. Uh, the only thing that might be able, that might be the reason why they don't is their loss to VCU uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, VCU currently has a 7-20 and record um, in the A-10, and that, that's not a very good record. It has them in the bottom uh, four teams. So th if anything holds them back, it, it would be that loss. But, you know, other losses, the two top teams in the Ivy League, Princeton and Columbia. So I think if they're able to make it into March, they can do fairly well, make it past the first round, uh, I ideally. It's, a big, it's not a big stretch. It's not out of this possibility. Mm -hmm. Well, like I was saying, the team is hungry. The team wants NCAA tournament basketball instead of NIT basketball. I think this could be the year that they just get that. Uh, but now we're going to transition over to the baseball field. And the Seton Hall baseball teams only played three games thus far. They're one and two, but they did play a number 12 ranked UNC baseball team. They were able to grab a win, winning 10 to eight. What did you see from that game and also from the team in general? Uh, this is definitely not the same Pirates team, I believe, from Good. from last year. I mean, last year when they played at UNC, they got swept, mm -hmm. and some of the some of the scores are really bad. I know one of them was fourteen nothing. Um, so it's getting the one win uh, really shows that the Pirates are you know kind of maturing, growing up, especially with the returning of players. One thing I, I really liked was uh, Patrick Diamico's three run homer in the fifth. That was just a big blast that kind of put them over the hump. They got uh, to keep having UNC want to play catch up with them, and they just kept kept being getting out of reach, so UNC wasn't able to catch up that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, like you talked about, Seton Hall has improved from last year, I hope so. Uh, at least it looks the, that way thus far. Um, and also, Seton Hall has quite a lot of returning players. Uh, we were talking before the show about Nick Piero, Stas Provosky, Jonathan Luters. All those guys are coming back. All those guys are going to be part of this team again. Will Gale is another one, a, a pitcher. Uh, and so that, it really bodes well for having success as it compounds when you don't have to you know, change players all the time. Because I remember uh, 
w when I first got to Seton Hall my freshman year, a lot of the players were seniors. And so once they graduated, it was basically a restart uh, for, for that next year in, in 2021. And so I think, like I was saying, it, it bodes well. And I think that hopefully this is something to build on. Hopefully not only is it a good win, but it gives them confidence. They have a road trip. They're going to Texas, I believe it is, uh, tonight. They're going to get on a plane uh, and fly there. So I think this win could be really something to build on. Uh, and it could uh, really help them uh, going forward through the rest of the season. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and talk about softball. Um, they are currently three and four on the season. So, like I said in the intro, they lost the first two, but they battled back. They won the next three of five, uh, and they have not given up more than three runs in a game so far. So, what are your thoughts on the softball team as a whole? Uh, the softball team is, uh, I have a feeling that they're definitely turning it around this year. Uh, they had a, a few young players last year that really contributed a lot, most notably Taylor Hill, uh, the sophomore now. And she, she had a big weekend this past weekend uh, down in uh, South Carolina. She batted a 333 average, uh, had six hits for three runs, including two home runs. So getting the consistent batting from uh, the players like her, Olivia Gilbert, Ashley Colonetta. So I think having that, as well as the pitching staff that we talked about earlier, that how there's a good depth there, uh, this Pirate seems definitely different from uh, last year. And that's exactly what I was going to mention was the pitching. Last year, Seton Hall had three pitchers, and one pitcher only pitched 27 innings in 30-plus games. So the fact that this Seton Hall Pirates team already has four pitchers in the rotation, getting work, uh, relieving the pressure. Um, I remember last year, Shelby Smith, I remember watching a doubleheader where, with Ryan Johnson, actually our producer uh, and director, I remember watching a doubleheader where she pitched the entire game, the first game, uh, was relieved by Sydney Babbitt, who started the second game, and they came in and finished that second game. So it was really a, a large amount of pitching for both Sydney Babbitt and Shelby Smith. But now with Carr and Crusher, uh, it looks like Seton Hall will have more pitchers in the rotation, which is so extremely helpful for keeping the arms fresh uh, and making sure that they do not get overloaded because Seton Hall also dealt with injuries in the pitching department last year, which is hopefully, fingers crossed, something Seton Hall does not have to deal with this season. Like I said, Seton Hall uh, did, has not given up more than three runs this season in all seven games that they've played. And in the three wins they have, they scored more than five and given up zero. So something to look forward to as the pitching um, is, is now coming to fruition. And the, the hits will come. I mean, if, if Seton Hall can stay in games where they gave up one, two, or even three runs, uh, that is not an unspeakable amount for the Seton Hall's hitters, as you mentioned, the, the players that are really coming into their own, to be able to do. So I definitely think this is a step in the right direction. We'll have to wait and see to how it turns out, but it certainly is looking better now than it was at this point in the season last year. So that will do it for this episode of Hall Talk for Liam Harding. My name is Louis Pasquale. For Wilner Lewis and Ryan Johnson, our producers, and also everyone on the crew, thank you for uh, helping us. And so we thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.